Hey guys, and welcome to uh, another replay analysis. Today we have Dr. Dark Knight, a.k.a. Isosceles, and we're going to be looking at a PBT versus me. I actually, he wanted, the, so the request was, he wanted me to play at a Diamond 3 level, like beta GM style. Uh, that's what I tried to accomplish here with him. I think we did an okay job. I don't think it was that crazy. But we're going to be looking at Isosceles' builds, his build, and seeing how he reacts to whatever he sees and what he does, and basically helping him get better at StarCraft as a whole. So let's uh, jump right into it, shall we? Another game, another learning opportunity. Oh my god, it's day nine. All right, let's let's see, let's see, let's see. I've stopped doing this personally. I've stopped doing this. I think it's uh, excessive. I don't know. I'm not really the biggest fan of this anymore. It really compromises your tech to people who do tank pushes. It's annoying, and I've just and also it increases the chances you're gonna have uh, delayed tech structures because you're always building so far away from the pylon and uh or if, uh, sorry so far away from the nexus and it's just like there's a chance that you're gonna not always guaranteed but there's a chance you're gonna miss some of your timing sometimes here and there when you have to like always earn your probe over there because you're not just gonna leave it there either i would honestly say just from now on this is my opinion you don't have to do this if you don't want to but this is this is what i i've, I've evolved beyond this i feel like i just wall up my mineral line against the wall Literally, I would put a pylon like right there and put a gateway like right there. That way, that is blocked. Reaper can't go through there. A Reaper can't go through here. It's totally blocked right there. So a Reaper, if it comes into your main and goes down and around towards the mineral line, it's going to die every time. Uh, I feel like against Terran, denying the Terran the scout of the initial tech is not as rewarding as I initially wanted it to be. The, o the only time, I'll say this, the only time, the only time, in my opinion, I think it would ever make sense to wall off your, your wall like this, is if you are the kind of player that likes to go for builds every once in a while that is like a proxied Stargate, or like a pro like basically proxy tech. Proxy Robo, proxy Stargate, because you could actually hide the fact that your tech is not actually in your main, and he doesn't know that, and in reality you're going for an all-in. Like, or some really crazy aggressive type of timing. But if you're just going to play standard defensively, I would honestly recommend just building your shit over here. Because it makes it easier for you. And it's, uh... Like, that that anti-scout, if you're not going to do anything cheesy anyways, is like, who gives a shit? It's, it's not a big deal. That's my opinion. I've stopped doing that every game. It's more frustrating than it's worth, I feel like. And see how your probe's sitting here? This is really bad. This is exactly why I'm... The, that's perfect. perfect example. Your probe shouldn't just sit there. I don't like that it is sitting there. Because the only, the, the only time I would ever say it would be worth it for your probe to sit there is if you were, if you were building over here. Because then it would be too far away if you went to go back and then go back again. But if you would have actually gone back to the mineral line, mined a mineral patch, and then came back here, you could have had... It's legit fi only five minerals, sure. But you could have easily mined one round of five minerals and then come right back and your pound still would be almost done. I don't like the probe sitting there though. Also, you're not building probes. Hold on, how long did that go for? Okay, so you just started a gateway. You should immediately start a probe again. You do. You chrono boost it. You make a gas. Your build is fine so far. You should immediately start a probe again right now. You can. You could have started a probe right when that probe finished. That probe finished at 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. You started another probe at 54. So that's six. You you just missed six seconds of chrono boost. And that is a big deal because you want to know what six seconds of chrono boost is? It's a full probe. 
A probe's build time is 12 seconds, and Chrono Boost cuts it in half. So you literally just... You could actually be a full... One whole probe ahead of where you are already. With what you just missed. <laughs> Do not Chrono Boost the second time either. So here's the thing. If you're going to go for... Uh, one gate expand. Never chrono boost your nexus twice until your natural is thrown down. Ever. Don't ever do that. The only time it ever makes sense to chrono boost your nexus twice is if you're going to go double gateway expand. Because if you're going to go double gateway expand, you actually need the gas to be able to actually utilize the gateways. Otherwise, it's pointless to have made double gateway. So double chrono boosting your probes makes sense if you go double gate. But if you go single gate, single chrono on your nexus until your natural is started, and then you can chrono your nexus again. Because what's going to happen now, this is what's going to happen now. You are prioritizing your gas as a result of this. You're not going to prioritize your mineral line. Because what happens now is you're already fully saturated, and you're going to get faster. You're going to spin minerals faster now to fill up your gases faster, which is going to delay your nexus longer, which is your other mineral line. So all mineral-based things now are delayed. You have now committed to gas. And if you don't do a build that is revolving around that, like a Stargate or some shit, it's, it's irrelevant. It doesn't make any sense now. The way it should go is if you're going to go for a natural, you prioritize that. as a That's a priority now. So you don't double chrono. And you saturate your gases a little slower. Because even if you saturate your gases a little slower, you still have enough gas to fully utilize a gateway one gateway but you're what's gonna happen now is you're gonna have way too much gas and here's okay well here's the trade-off you actually are going to have a very late core now you're because uh, you're actually prioritizing the uh, <coughs> excuse me sorry you're prioritizing the Nexus now which is you know that's I, I like that you prioritize the Nexus I want you to do that but the fact that you double chronoed, there's got to be a give and take somewhere. But because you're still making probes, you double chronoed the Nexus. Oh, um, yeah. Now your core is going to be super late. So now let's look and see how long it takes for your your gateway to finish and then the core to start. Yo, d -Live, thank you very much for the 913 sub, dude. Welcome back with the baby sub. Your core, just in general, should be going down within like three seconds of your gateway finishing, which is again why I think you should just start building your pylon here, dude. Because you can build the gateway there and you can build the core there. Like you can literally take a probe to the mineral line, build it, go back to the mineral line, easy peasy. I highly recommend it. Um, but let's see how long it takes. 123 is when your gateway finished. Your gateway is done, 123. How long does it take now for you build a core? Your core starts at 143. Your core is 20 seconds late after the gateway is done. And that is part of two reasons. One, you built it way the fuck over here. So it's a little awkward. You missed your window of minerals for a minute there. Like or for a few seconds there. You could have probably built it like 17 seconds after uh, with what you had. But the fact that you... Uh, and also, you uh, here's the thing too. Maybe I did the double chrono shit. Maybe I did the double chrono shit in a uh, bronze to GM, but I won't ever do it again. I I'm much. I actually feel like I am better at Protoss now than I was when I made this series. If so, if you're copying something I might have done in B to GM, do not double chrono boost your nexus. It's fucking stupid. Uh, it makes no sense for all the reasons we just said a second ago. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, all it does is something has to be sacrificed and delayed now, which is your core. That's super late core. 20 seconds on a core being late. If I went Reaper, there, you know what? You want to know what the result of that would be? You would lose like four probes guaranteed because of how late that, that core is. Like, that's a guarantee you would lose that many probes. Unless you microed your probes like an absolute beast and I microed my Reaper like a, a fucking potato. Uh, in general, though, this is like guaranteeing your probes are going to die. If I 
decided to Reaper harass you. And like the trade off is, is you just wanted to chrono out like two more probes faster. So it's like the trade off is delayed core for two more probes faster, but now that now you have a super late core, so now you lose four more probes to a Reaper. So it's it's not worth what it, what it seems. And then on top of that, double chronoing as well. Double chronoing your Nexus before the second pylon. So you're, to be fair, your second chrono should happen when your second pylon finishes. Because what's happening now is your money gets stretched super thin. And you actually are going to supply block now just like you are. You threw down your second gas first, which is what you should do. And then you threw in your second pylon after, which is fine. But because of the chrono boost... You're going to supply block now. So not only would you lose probes, but you're also supply blocking to prevent yourself from making probes. You already missed six seconds on this Nexus earlier by not building probes that one time during your chrono boost. And the like on probe number 17 or whatever. But now you're going to supply block for like 12 seconds. Like another probe is going to be fully blocked out. It's like literally like 12 seconds. Like 13 seconds of just block. Which is another probe again. So already for you, for what happened in, in your opener, you've already set yourself behind two probes as it is. Uh, like the point. The point is, is you burn more chrono boost to speed up, but then you, even though probes haven't even died yet, you've missed probes as well at the same time. So ultimately, what's happened is you've actually probably ended up at the exact same spot you would be at either way, with probe count at this particular moment in the game, at two twenty one. Having 23 probes, I bet you could get that while having 110 or 111 energy on your Nexus at second chrono. And then you could actually double chrono boost your Nexus for probes going towards your natural. And chrono boost this Nexus for probes going to your natural. So you'd have a full other bonus chrono. And also, here's another thing. Dude. You actually need to send one. You do need to also chrono boost your gateway one time. So that would actually be the, the to be fair, it would actually be the gateway chrono. And then you'd have another spare chrono for the Nexus to go to the natural. So just know that first chrono boost should be right as your pylon finishes, your first pylon finishes. Second and third chrono boost should be together on your gateway and your Nexus at simultaneously when your second pylon finishes. And you're not chrono boosting your stalker. You would be so fucking dead by a Reaper, dude. You have to chrono boost. Like, the delayed... Uh, I know you saw also I had a factory, so maybe you just knew I wasn't going to go for Reaper. But just in general, this is bad habits. I don't know if this is what you do every game or if it's, if it's your reaction to what I did this game to you. But not prioritizing a Stalker out faster, you would get punished so hard by Reapers. This is like, if you don't Chrono Boost the Reaper... Uh, sorry, if you don't Chrono Boost the Stalker, I already said you would lose... I already said you would lose like uh, four probes to a Reaper before, which is very fair. That's a very fair call. The fact that you're not chrono boosting your Stalker, you would lose another two. You would, I seriously think you would lose like six fucking probes to a Reaper before your Stalker came out to help. But to be fair, I feel like you would probably chrono boost your Stalker if I was already in your mineral line shooting your probes. I imagine you probably would chrono boost your gateway then because you're like, oh shit, my probes are dying. But yeah, you get the point though. Like it, it's it's a very important. It's super important. You don't need to chrono boost the gateway more than once, but you do need to chrono boost it the first time because a stalker comes out way later than a reaper does or an or an adept. Because the thing here's the thing, a gateway, a pylon is the same build time as a depot. A gateway is the same build time as a barracks. A cyber core is not something Terran has to make to make a Reaper. So he can just make a Reaper right away. So it'd be like him making a Zealot and walking across the map. But a Reaper is way faster than a Zealot, so it gets across the map pretty fucking quickly. But the fact that you have to wait on the Cyber Core, that's like the build time of the Reaper. And then to be fair, a Cyber Core is even longer build time than a Reaper. And then uh, uh, correct, right? I'm not wrong on that, right? It's 36 seconds versus... Yeah, it's, it's a four second longer build time. The core is a four second longer build time than the Reaper. So four seconds after the core is done, the Reaper will have already moved across the map a little bit. Maybe like from like, if it popped out right here, it would be like right there, four seconds later. It would like jump down the cliff and be like right there. I, I think that's fair. 
But then in the build time of a stalker, which is like 28 seconds, I think, it's 30 seconds. 30 seconds for him to go from here all the way into your base, which would only take him probably like 18 seconds to cross the map. So there's like 12 seconds where he would just be blasting your fucking probes. But here's the thing. If you actually chrono boost your stalker, it gets cut in half. So it's only 15 seconds. So if it, it takes the Reaper like 18 seconds or so to cross the map, that would mean that the Reaper, as it gets to like right here, like goes starts getting ready to go up your ramp or something or getting ready to jump up the cliff, your stalker would be spawning. So yeah, that's, that's a big deal. It's a huge deal. You're going to run into Terrans who Reaper abuse you all day, especially when you get to Master's League. Like, everybody opens Reaper. Um, so, keep that in mind. That's very, very, very important. <coughs> center upgraded. <laughs> Way too early on the forges. Way too fucking early. Do not do not build forges. The, the only time it would ever make sense to build forges this fast is if your build was going to be like a very precise like 10 gateway or like 8 gateway 2 base all in off of like 1-1 one, one or something like that. And even then, double forge is kind of excessive. If you were going to do like a really heavy gateway timing with a really early forge upgrade, having just a single forge would probably do better for you. You actually would prefer to make a Twilight Council first and then make your forges after. Or, or you can make Twilight Council and forges together at the same exact time. But if you do that... You shouldn't be making any of those buildings until your third base has already started. Like, you should be, like, starting to saturate your third base and then make Double Forge Council. Way too early on this. You'll never be able to afford it. Why not Robo Bay? He's going Robo Bay because he's doing a Robo Opener, which is totally fine. If you're going to open Robo, going Robo Bay right after is totally fine because that means you have access to Colossus or Disruptors. Disruptors are really good against tank timings. Colossus are really good against basically everything else um, for the most part, like any type of bio timing, unless it's very Marauder heavy. Uh, but Colossus with Shield Battery are super, super, super good. Uh, with like You have a couple sentries and a Shield Battery that you can do Supercharge Battery with the battery overcharge ability and Colossus there you could you could hold almost every type of bio bio timing um, it allows you to be greedier and you can make less gateways and take a third base faster yeah your upgrades are way too early man all of them way too fucking fast you'll never be able to afford this and now because of this too your third base is so late you're fully saturated. You're oversaturated on your natural. Um, and if your goal is to take a third base, imagine if you would have started a third base before these were made. So your third base is just super delayed now. And I already have a third going down as me, as Terran. And you, like mine's done. It's already an orbital and it's done and it lifted to it. And I'm mining from it. And you just started your third. Protoss has more probes than Terran. That's pretty standard, by the way. Like, the fact that you have to make command centers into orbital commands is no SCP production. And the fact that Chrono Boost exists is double the speed of, of worker production. But notice how even though I have less workers, I have more income. Not in gas yet, but I do have more income in minerals. It's because mules exist. That's the power of Terran. I don't mind your choice to go to Shepters either because you saw I was going mech. That's fine. It's better than Colossus. 
I agree with it. Upgrade complete. I thought about five minutes was the good timing for a Protoss third to go down. That's a good Zerg. Uh, you have to really like think about what you're doing here. And I'm going to tell you right now. Let's go back. You just killed my cyclone. You lost the stalker and you just killed my cyclone. And you also have a fully saturated mineral line. You could have a fully saturated mineral line if you put all three of these probes, the two in here and the one on this, on the mineral line. It could be 16 out of 16. You could easily build a nexus right now, another nexus. And you already have access to your robo bay. You uh, And you even have like expenses of two fucking forges, which shouldn't be here. This should be another gateway. You should make a second gateway always when you make your robo. And then you could, like I said, you could start your third base. And you could start chrono boosting out Colossus. and Or uh, Disruptors, because you saw I was going for mech with your Sentry Scout. Uh, and that would be great. That'd be fine. What could I do to... What What would I be able to do against you if you took a third base? And then when you scouted me with your, with your Hallucinated Phoenix, you saw I had a third command center. You're not doing a timing. You're playing defensive. So think about it like this, okay? Think about, think about this, because you're you're saying a four minute third is too greedy, isn't it? And it's five minute third is more standard. Why do Protosses take a five minute third against Zerg in PVZ? It's because they always do a timing, right? It's like DT drop, Prism, fucking Archon Prism. It's uh, uh, like seven adepts with glaives or five adepts with glaives. It's a timing. There's always a timing involved, which means you make extra gateways. You always make like four gates or some shit before you take your third base. And you have a tech building too, right? But you don't need to do this against Terran if you're going to play defensive because you're not doing a timing. You're doing defensive postured probing. So if you go two gate robo, you could literally take your third, especially since I just lost the cyclone. That's, that's expensive as fuck for me. I, I opened up really fast factory and just lost my cyclone you could totally take your third right now and your plan is to take one anyways so why not take it now like nothing really nothing could kill you if i expand like this nothing literally nothing can kill you if you take a third because getting your the thing is is getting your forge forge council that doesn't do shit for you anyways right now if you took a third base which you do eventually take it but if, when you take a third base with your Forge Forge Council, when these upgrade, when I, if I were to have attacked you, and these upgrades were all like 60% of the way done, like a full minute after you started them, or so, like what would that do for you? It would do nothing. It would just your money would be tied up anyways into production of upgrades that are effect. They are not in effect yet. They're just they're almost there, but they're, for now they're doing nothing because they're still not done yet. So. If you really think about it, doing this is actually riskier than going for a faster third because all this is going to do is it's going to tie up your money at the early stage of the game if you're if you're actually worried about like a two base timing that's going to kill you if you were to take a third. Cuz you're going to increase your odds to die now because now you're going to have less chrono boost. You're going to have uh less vision, I guess. And you're also going to have less probes that you can recover with. If I were to do damage to you, and let's say you didn't die. So the this actually makes even less sense. Like, if you think about it in terms of, like, being greedy. This is greedier than going for a third right now. Because this increases your chances of, like, you could get fucked up right now even harder. Because these aren't these literally do nothing for you until the upgrades are done. So if I did a timing, this would be tying your money up and that's all it would do research complete I think two forges is fine I just think that the speed at which you took them is way too fast I think once you have your third base if you would have reversed the order and went third base first 
and then double forage council, I would have agreed with you. I would have been like, yeah, it's fine. And then you can add in more gates. You could then add in a Templar Archives and go into uh, Storm if you needed to, or Archons with Charge Lot, Blink, Disruptor, because I'm going Mech. That would have been a much more solid way to go about it. Because again, your plan is to go for a third anyways, right? So delaying your economy so hard is just doing nothing but putting you behind now. Which is why you're Protoss, I'm Terran, and you're the one with Chrono Boost, and you're behind in supply. That should not happen, honestly. I think you should be ahead overall. The only way, the only way you should be behind me in supply is if I was going for a two base all in. But I'm I'm going for a really quick third. Vibe. Still rocking your bronze to GM Zerg Vidis. Gone from silver to plat in two months. Thanks. Yo, oh, congrats, dude. Thank you very much for the bits, Slogma. Thank you, bro. Alright. I I like your fourth base though. Uh, I mean like I, I do think your fourth base should go faster. Considering if your whole game was faster. Like, that's like pacing, right? Your, your build's a little bit behind now, overall. So your pacing is a little off. But I do like the, the concept of you take your third, or sorry, you take your fourth as soon as your third is saturated. I like that. You should definitely do that. To be fair, I honestly think your fourth base could be even maybe a little faster. Because I feel like you could take your fourth base when your third is fully saturated on the mineral line. And then you could finish saturating your gases while you take your fourth. And then you upgrade your gateway count and all that stuff. Research complete. Also, just a tip as well. If you ever know you're playing against mech, and you, let's just say, hypothetically, you realize this after you've made double forge, don't actually use the second forge. This is, this is a good concept versus bio. This is awful versus mech. Going armor against mech is a waste. And let me let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. What is a Hellion good against? It's good against Zealots, right? And Blue Flame is going to beat the shit out of your Zealots regardless. Your Zealots are... Like, if you're like, I'm going to send Zealots at Hellbats and Hellions, you're just asking to die, right? You're just going to be like, okay, this sucks ass. Uh, and then everything else, Hellions suck against. Like, against Stalkers, against Disruptors, against Colossus, whatever. Disruptor or uh, uh, Hellions are shit against everything but Zealots. And I don't think you're going to be making Adepts against Mech, let's, let's be real. Uh, even though, uh, again, uh, Hellions would be okay against Adepts as well. But you're not going to make them. You're going to make some combination of Charge Lots, Stalkers, and uh, like Robo Units would be my guess. Uh, and maybe Templar. But my point is, is armor does nothing for Zealots when you run into a bunch of Blue Flame Hellions. Like, you're just going to die either way. Armor, again, does nothing for any of your units against uh, a Cyclone, because a Cyclone's lock-on is considered a spell. It's not actually an auto-attack. It pierces armor. You could have literally 100 armor on a Zealot, and a Cyclone's lock-on missile would still do the same damage, because it's a spell. It's like a corrosive bile. It's not an auto-attack. Uh... And then the the Thor hits hard as fuck. This thing is an ass beater. Armor doesn't really do much for you here either against Thors. It really doesn't. It's it, This unit hits so ridiculously hard. And each weapon upgrade is worth mo multiple values over an armor upgrade. And the same thing can be said about a siege tank. Again, this unit is another ass beater. It hits somewhat slow. Uh, Thor is actually kind of fast as well, which is crazy. Thors are just... Uh, ridiculously strong but uh, a siege tank hits pretty slow but it hits hard as fuck so armor again is not going to do much against this, these units the point I, is is you would be better off instead of investing into an armor upgrade and a forge saving all of those resources and buying extra units like having your supply be 8 supply higher or 10 supply higher because you didn't build a forge and you didn't upgrade the last 2 armor upgrades you upgraded all that money got freed up to make units with that would be better. You would have more DPS in your army because you'd have more units doing DPS when there's no realistic uh, uh, situation where armor is ever going to make your army last longer to do more DPS. Does that make sense? 
Like, you're not going to do more damage because your army is not going to last longer than it otherwise would have because you have armor upgrades. It's not going to happen against mech. Against bio, yes it would. Against mech, fuck no. Mech is just going to shit on you all day regardless if you don't have enough to overpower it. Like, armor is not going to change that. Uh, so yeah, armor upgrade is honestly worthless here. The second you saw... If I were you, the second I saw mech and I confirmed it, if I even did have double forge, I would have canceled this upgrade. I would have been like, ah, no, no more. No, 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 no. Do not even build that. Why is Terran going attack upgrade first if it don't do shit? What do you mean? What? That has nothing to do with that has nothing to do with what I just said. Just so you guys know, an attack upgrade and an armor upgrade don't cancel each other out in StarCraft. An armor upgrade in StarCraft is always worth one. 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 However, an attack upgrade is worth multiple values based on how much damage the unit does. Like a Thor, for instance, gets three. It actually gets six. 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 Because it has two attacks and it gets three damage per upgrade, counts which counts as fucking six damage. So a Thor gets fucking 18 damage from three weapon upgrades. Not three. Does that make uh, I, I feel like, I hope that makes sense for people. But yeah, like, weapon doesn't just counter armor. That's not as simple as how StarCraft works. There are actual number values on units uh, that change shit a lot. Okay, anyways. Uh, Alright. Let's fucking keep going, boys. Mineral field empty. Send those workers yeah, like your fourth bases. Your, your expansions are all a little too late. All of them. Every single base you made this game. Your natural, your third, your fourth, all of them were a little too late. And your saturations are not the greatest. Like, it's not the worst, but it could be better. For all the things, all the reasons we talked about it already throughout the game. Stargates. Also, you went... Uh, I, I didn't actually watch your army very much because I didn't micro much this game. But I think you went Tempest, if I'm not mistaken. Don't actually go Tempest anymore either. The only time Tempest ever actually makes sense is if the Terran goes Liberators. But if you want an easier choice that is also just more solid, go Carriers. Like, you can eventually rotate your army into just a bunch of Carriers. And if you went, if you actually would have had an army eventually that is disruptor carrier, it's fucking insane. Actually, you know what? No, that's what I just what I just said. It's actually more against bio again. Against mech, it's oh, fine. You go tempest, it's fine. Yeah. I actually prefer tempest against mech. What am I talking about? I like I'm just trying to like recreate how I play. And yeah, I actually do like tempest against mech. I take that back. Because Thor is actually would just fucking annihilate carriers. Upgrade complete. Upgrade complete. Time for a time. I mean, you could you could go carriers. I think you, if you got good disruptor hits with it, you could do it. But yeah, I don't mind Tempest. Tempest is Tempest is solid. Tempest is solid against Mech. It's harder to micro though. I'm just gonna throw that out there. You're trying. Like, I feel like you're also. It's kind of like double-edged sword territory here. When I'm trying to like somewhat also teach you how I play against Mech personally, but you have to realize that. My Protoss is a lot higher than Diamond. Uh, and being able to micromanage your Disruptors constantly is not going to be super easy. And if you don't micromanage dis uh, your Tempest Disruptor against Thor uh, properly, you're gonna, be, your army is just gonna fall apart. Like Thor, Thor Tempest, or geez, uh, sorry. Uh, Tempest Disruptor is actually very fragile and needs to be microed against Thor. Thor is god mode if you don't micro it. Like, Thor just beats the shit out of Tempest and Disruptor if you don't micro properly. Your pylon is under attack. 
And one thing I saw you do as well is you expended your your fucking load on your tempests. Or yeah, sorry, on your disruptors like crazy. And you should make disruptors, by the way, in sets of three. You have five, which is weird. Uh, and the reason why that's important is because if you make... Actually, you know what, Dr. Dragnet? I'm going to quiz you really fast. I'm going to keep going with this, but I want you to answer this question and I'll come back to it in a second. Why do you think I say you should make disruptors in sets of three? Answer that. And if you don't know the answer, I'll tell you. But try try your best. See, see if you can get it. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. All right, and then uh, you should also be making cannons too at your mineral lines. As soon as you get to like that point where you're ready to max, literally like one or two cannons per mineral line, you should definitely do that. Because right now your base is also so fucking vulnerable to Hellion run bys. And if you actually, and all, you made way too many zealots as well. This is way too many zealots for the fact that you're playing against mech and I have Hellions with blue flame. This is way too, like this should be stalkers, not zealots. Cause watch your watch your zealots, just run in and die. Like, how many zealots did you have? You have. <laughs> okay, you have twenty three zealots. Twenty three zealots. And you actually just hit me with a few disruptor hits right there. So you weakened my army a bit. You killed a couple Hellbats. You weakened a, couple, a few Thors. But you have tw you had 23, 23 Zealots. My last, or sorry, I actually have, I still have more Hellbats behind my Thors. But the front line of my Thors just, or sorry, the front line of my Hellbats just went down and you already only have nine Zealots. Like my Thors haven't even been touched yet other than from your disruptors. And they're just now getting touched. You lost so many fucking Zealots. Like, Zealots are shit here. They're, like, Zealots would be good if you killed all my Hellbats and then made a wave of Zealots to kill my Thors. Then that would have been really good. But having Zealots initially to fight the... Having Zealots initially to fight the Hellbats is, like, the same thing as, like, having just mass Zerglings to fight Baneling Roach. Like, it's just fucking bad. And also, the, the reason why I tell you three disruptors, uh, set, disruptors in sets of three, is because it takes three disruptor hits to kill a Thor. So if you're throwing four fucking Novas at a Thor, that's a waste of a Nova. So you should be throwing your disruptor shots at Thors in sets of three. So if you have six disruptors, you have two sets to work with. Three, you say one, two, three, blow up like three Thors. One, two, three, blow up another like three Thors. Or if you don't want to blow up the Thors, you could literally, you could stagnate it and be like one, 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 one. And you're throwing it at like Hellbats because it only takes one Disruptor hit to kill a Hellbat. So you have to pick and choose, right? If you have a bunch of Zealots in your army, it probably would have made more sense there to kill all my Hellbats. And like throw out Disruptor hits one by one by one and try to get juicy fucking hits on my Hellbats. So that your Thors, or sorry, so that my, th my Thors would be just overrun by your Zealots. That would have made more sense there. Uh, as opposed to, like, if you have mass stalkers and uh, disruptors, it would make more sense to have your disruptors hit my Thor because your stalkers can easily handle the, the Hellbats because you could just kite. Vice versa, if you also had Tempest, it would make more sense to, again, throw sets of three into the Thors because you're trying to support the Tempest. You don't micro that much in D3. I agree. You don't micro a whole lot in D3. You don't. You shouldn't. And I think that if, if well, he's not playing a, a diamond level playstyle. He's playing. This is somewhat like my Protoss, which is GM level against Mech, which is much much more advanced. Uh, if you were gonna play a diamond level style against Mech, it would literally just be fucking stalkers, immortals, and like archons, and maybe some charge lots here and there. Like, you just literally go, Charge Lot, Stalker, Immortal, Archon. And you just make that repeatedly and just A-move. Which is what uh, I did in, like, Bronze to Plat. We started, like, experimenting a little bit more outside of that as we've gotten a Diamond. But 
I'm not really super opposed. To, if you were, if, if this guy was in plat, if Isosceles was platinum, I'd be like, no, dude. Don't fucking play this way. But the fact that he is already diamond, I don't mind it. Because he's going to have to eventually learn how to micro shit anyways. So, it's fine. I don't mind. It's not the worst idea. Like that right there. Do not ever do that. You just did a shift command. You move, com you move commanded and then did a shift disruptor sh wave shot. Do not ever do that. And you also sent five Novas out at once. And it only takes three to kill a Thor. It takes two to kill a tank. It takes one to kill a Hellbat. Like the perfect way to micro this would have been like this. You know my army's still standing there. You literally just saw it. And the fact that I haven't moved yet, right now, this is how you should micro this. You're moving your disruptors like right here, right now. You go like this. V click, V click, V click. Or whatever the fucking hockey is for you. I don't know what your hockey is. Mine's V. You do the hockey three times. Go hockey, click, hockey, click, hockey, click. Three times. And then you move your disruptors like there. You don't let them just walk all the way into die. You, you, you move them here, cast three times, and then move back with your army. And then you green box the, the orbs as they're coming forward. And you grab the three orbs and you blow up the Thors just like you did. And then if I still don't move, send another two out. Just like you just did a second ago. Send your last two out and blow up whatever else you can. And you would have you would have lost no disruptors and you would have done a fuckload of damage to my army. Because I am literally not microing anything. I am just A-moving you with mech. And a lot of people will do that. A lot of people will micro that way in diamond. If they actually do what I just did here. Which is mech. But the fact that you shift commanded it like that, that is so bad because you've just opened yourself. Like, the reason why it's bad is because if I'm sitting here and it's it's perfect, if it's like, well, I'm actually not moving and I'm AFK, it'll be okay. It won't be the worst, as we just saw. You lost the disruptor for it, but you still killed a big chunk of my army. But if I was on fucking A move right now and I was going towards you and my army caught you right there on your little shift command path, and you have to walk deeper into my army to right there to be able to shoot your shots off. I would kill like half of your disruptors before you even get here. And then as you shoot your shots as you get here, your disruptors would die before the shots actually detonate. Like guaranteed. So don't ever do shift command shit like this with spellcasters. It's so fucking bad. Don't ever do that. It's very, very bad. That's a horrible way to micro. And because and, and, you have to realize... It's never a perfect engagement. They shift back and forth. And if you start becoming the kind of guy who builds habits where you micro like this, you're going to get fucked a lot. People will just ruin your day. Like, it's going to be bad. Do not ever get in the habit of microing like that. See, like, now this wave of zealots, this was fine. I didn't mind that wave of zealots because I have barely any hellbats. But you got to be careful, though, because I just made hellbat Thor. So now if you don't do anything with the Hellbats and I'm making a new army of Hellbat Thor and you just sit on these Zealots, that's once again bad. So these Zealots should definitely be like going over and attacking my bases or something. Like doing something rather than just massing Zealots. Also, you don't Chrono Boost enough. Yeah, you're making zealots again. This makes no sense. Uh, you don't chrono boost nearly enough. Like you, you should be chrono boosting nonstop on your uh, your. If you're gonna go air now, you should be chrono boosting this nonstop. You should be chrono boosting this nonstop. And this should have also been chrono boosted nonstop until you got level three weapons. And you should also definitely get blink. And you're making zealots again. Yeah, dude, you make way too many zealots. Zealots are so shit uh, against Hellions. And if I'm, ma if I'm massing Hellions, the only time zealots ever make sense is if you counterattack. But you can't really initiate a counterattack if I'm defensive. And it just so happens that I actually moved out as you moved into my base. Or no, I actually came back. Just kidding. Like, watch these zealots, okay? Watch these zealots. So, you have 27 zealots right now. And now you have six. And you killed 
zero units. You almost killed a Thor. Because you got roasted by Blue Flame and Thors just take the shit out of you. So, Zealots are bad. Like, at, at, on this stage, at this point in the game, Zealots are fucking terrible. And all that's doing is it's just, you're literally, like, basically taking your money out and lighting it on fire repeatedly when you make them like that. Because you're massing them again. More Robo Stargate? You don't need more Robo Stargate. Just make fucking Stalkers. That's all you need. <clears throat> stalkers. Against Thor, Hellbat, Stalkers would be way better. Because again, you're being supported by Disruptors. You're being supported by seven fucking Disruptors right now. Bonus versus Armored. What are you talking about? Thors don't do fucking more damage to Armored. Right, no, okay, sorry. I see what you're saying. Okay, my bad. I thought you were talking about Thors. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Stalkers do bonus damage armor. That is correct. They would actually kill Thors faster than Zealots would. But the thing is, is... you're Okay, think about it like this, guys. You're not actually making Stalkers to kill the composition. You're not making... You guys gotta really realize this. You are not making Stalkers to kill this army. You are making Stalkers to clean it up. What is actually going to kill this army? It's these. Fucking Disruptors. If you're committing to Disruptors against Thor Hellbat, Disruptors are a very hard counter to Thor Hellbat. Again, one it AoE one-shots Hellbats, and it AoE three-shots Thors. You are going to just... its like Imagine a block of cheese, and you just take a fucking baseball bat, and you just smash the block of cheese as hard as you can, and little bits of it are just kind of like scattered around. The Stalkers just go kind of finish off the rest. It's like the little bits that are left, the Stalkers go kill the rest of it. But the Disruptors punch a fucking massive hole in his army. That's what the point of the Disruptor is. What's good if you don't go Disruptors? Immortals are fine? Like, a moving Immortals would be fine. My The point I'm trying to make here is... Is these disrupt the, uh, the, these uh, zealots don't do shit in these fights ever? They just run in and die, like they're awful. And then watch these uh, disruptors again. This is this is not the correct usage of micro here. All seven shots go off at once, and it's another shift command again. Like that was awful. That was really bad, because. You, you microed that incorrectly in two ways. Stalker equal janitor. Got it. One one of the ways you microed that inefficiently is you uh you're trying you keep doing these shift commands with all your disruptor shots all at once repeatedly. Don't st li stop fucking microing like that. Nobody micro like that ever, please. Ever. <laughs> Do not ever micro a spellcaster with shift commands. Uh, the only time I can ever think of it ever making sense. To micro as spellcaster with shift commands is before rapid fire even existed before people understood what rapid fire was which is like back in 2011 and you would be a zerg player who wanted to make like a hundred infested terrans at once that is the only fucking time shift command made sense because you would be like infestors go here and then just I, as soon as you get there i want like 50 infested terrans to pop out and then i'll i'll just spam more as it goes that's the only time that shit ever made sense. It makes absolutely no sense with disruptors. Shift click goes to nuke. Okay. We're getting super technical now. Um, to talk about a nuke, okay. If I'm going to shift click nukes onto a base, and then onto a base, and then onto a base... And I want my ghost to not walk directly the shortest path possible, but I want him to like be evasive and go around the sides of the map. Then yes, doing a shift command nuke makes sense there. But if if I'm fighting a fucking army here in my face, and I have ghosts going back and forth in my army, and I'm like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna line up a nuke 
so I can make him unseage his tanks or something like that. And then I shift command my nuke forward and try to cast my nuke on his tanks to make him unseage, but I my ghost walks too far forward because I've misinterpreted the situation and I've done a shift command rather than an, an immediate fucking action. There's a very high chance I could lose my ghost. Shift command spellcasters and and what's the word I'm trying to use here? I don't know what word I'm trying to use here. It's real time fights that can be five inches forward, five inches backwards. Like it shifts the battle location shifts constantly. It's it's not a static location. It's constantly changing based on how you guys both move your armies. If you use shift command spellcasters in fights like that, that is so bad. It is ridiculously bad. It's not a static event, like a building, which is what shift what shift command nukes are. It's a building. It doesn't move. So you don't want to be shift commanding your fucking spellcasters when they could just walk in to die. And then again, all all you'd have to do, seriously, all you'd have to do is if you walk through disruptors like here, V click three times. Three shots go off, boom, you blow up a bunch of Thors. V-click three more times again, boom, you blow up another group of Thors. Instead of all at once. And then also, here's the thing too. Never, ever, 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 when you're using a Disruptor, never, ever click a unit. <coughs> you click the unit here. I know you did this. Because watch your Disruptors. They all stack up on this fucking Thor. They don't go into the Thor. They stack up on his ass. They will not go through him, they will stack on him. Do you see that? That was awful. You killed one Thor with that. Do not ever click a Thor. Click through units. So your your disruptor balls go underneath them and blow up AoE in the center of their armies. So the perfect way to micro it would be if you cast the disruptor shots right here. You launch three waves at him. And then you like move commanded your disruptor shots to like over here so that they're going to detonate like right there. And if you're really good at timing it, you can throw a disruptor shot over here and you can literally time it to where it will just explode in the fucking army. If you have a really good understanding of how far a disruptor shot can travel. But you do not ever fucking right-click units with it. Ever. I feel bad for Dr. Dragon. He's getting roasted. You don't feel bad for him. It's fucking replay analysis. Dude, I'm helping him a lot right now is what I'm doing. I'm giving him so much fucking information. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. If you ever pay for replay analysis and I'm over here being like, Nice, still done. Good fucking disruptor shots. You use, your, you, you use the unit. Make sure you use it again before it, it dies. <laughs> the fuck kind of analysis is that? I, I gotta be hard on you to help you learn faster. Hey, you did it again. Literally, you did it again right there. I didn't even know you did that because I'm not. I was not watching these fights when I was playing. I was just looking at my base. But you 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 sent all of them out at once again. You have you have literally six disruptors. It's perfect to wipe out two waves of Thors. You could honestly wipe out that front clump right there, and then you could wipe out that back clump right there. I'm loving this so much. If this is roasting, turn up the fucking heat. Yo, Dr. Darknet, thank you for the hundred bits, man. Much love. Appreciate you, dude. Uh <clears throat> but yeah, like if two two rounds of three shots here, you would wipe out the majority, if not all, of these Thors. And then the cleanup crew of like Stalker Immortal could clean up the remainder, like maybe one Thor or a couple of Hellbats here and there. Easy. But you do all shots at once with Disruptors again, and then you click a Thor again in the front. So watch all your Disruptor shots once again converge around the front guy. They get stuck. They kill a Thor. And that's it. They don't go underneath at all. There's only one unit in the game. Only one unit in the game that you cannot have a disruptor shot go underneath. And it is a siege tank while in siege mode. That is the only unit that you cannot actually go underneath it. 
every single other unit in the game that is a ground unit you are you will have 100% no matter what no matter what you're allowed to throw disruptor shots under them to blow them up or over them if it's if it's burrowed units it goes over them for people who are like what about burrow it literally just goes over their head and then it, it works the same way it's just reversed it still blows them up on top of them yeah dude this uh why is siege tank the exception because the siege tank counts as a building while it's sieged and you can't shoot disruptor shots underneath buildings The the only the only thing that a siege tank doesn't count as a building for when it's sieged is a baneling's auto attack, so a baneling doesn't do like building damage to a fucking siege tank, but the pathing of the unit counts as a building. You cannot walk through a tank when it's in siege mode, and nor nor can it ever be moved. And you can't like build on a siege tank while it's sieged. Your worker would be like, can't do that, and because the siege tank can't move, it's it's literally fucking stuck in the ground. It's like fortified in that spot. Vipers. Oh my god, chat. You guys make replay analysis is really hard. Jesus. Viper? Yes, you can abduct the tank. Holy fuck. But the pathing of a tank acts like a building. So you can't shoot fucking underneath it. For the love of god, please. You guys are frustrating the shit out of me right now. And th now you are you're just going to die because you're doing a style that the Zealots are fucking you pretty bad, and then your disruptor usage is screwing you really bad. But uh, ultimately, because you've spent so much time doing it like this, and you're kind of falling apart, your base has also been allowed to be crumbled, and now it's three base Perdos versus like six base Terran. So, and the Terran also not only has six bases, but lots of orbitals everywhere. So you are definitely at a disadvantage in terms of economy. Look at that shit. Like you're you're getting doubled in mining. So you're definitely going to fall behind now. Like you're never going to be able to recover. You still could you, okay, you you could recover if you have good disruptor usage. Well, watch your last one and then it's probably going to be the same thing and you probably click a thor in the front and then it just like wastes it. Actually, we just kind of like pass each other like two ships in the night here, so never mind. Yeah, like you just expended all, all but one of your disruptors on that one Thor, and that all that actually did is it killed your zealots. Look at this. You just gotta realize you, you gotta if you want to use disruptors, do yourself a favor. I just told you I just told you how to micro them ideally, but do yourself a favor and learn how many disruptor hits it takes to kill a unit. And I'm gonna tell you right now, three for a Thor, two for a tank, one for a Hellbat, one for a Cyclone, one for a Widow Mine. And that is my whole uh, range of units I could be making here. Heli and Hellbat both only take one. So one, 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 two, three. Because like what happened here, like this is awful for you. Like your, your zealots walk into the Thor and you actually do more damage to yourself here than you do to me. Because you do kill a Thor, but you kill all your zealots. Except for that one. You killed like four zealots there. See, there you, that was good. That was a good disruptor hit. Do you see that shit? You actually didn't right click this Thor and have it sit right there. You went underneath all three of them and it, you just blew up three of my Thors. That's exactly how you need to do it all the time. And imagine if you had three shots. That first shot, that or the first four shots that hit my one Thor and your Zealots. Imagine if that was three shots right there and you just wiped out all my Thors immediately. Your Immortals and your Zealots would then just overpower this last Thor easy peasy. And it would just die. 
Obviously, you'd still have to deal with this army, but so the game's not over. But if you did that a lot more throughout the game, you would have had a, you would have had a much better chance. But now, because you uh, didn't blow up the Thors ideally, you just lost all your zealots. You lost the sentry. You lost a bit of your army because of the auto attack. So the units are dying. I don't need to die, and it'll keep happening throughout the game. But yeah, anyways, thank you for watching the replay analysis. I hope it helped. Uh, much love to Isosceles, Dr. Dr. Dark Knight. Appreciate you, man. I wish you the best of luck. And uh, until next time, take it easy, boys.